Yes, even deeper than the fact that they were literally shipping and delivering babies legally in 1913, and they would even put stamps on the children's clothing? Even crazier than that, supposedly, the world's first narrative film, the first real movie ever, is called La Feu Chou, or The Cabbage Patch Fairy, from 1896. Now that was the 1900s version. There's some controversy on the film outside of the entire Cabbage Patch repopulation subject because the director was a woman named Alice Guy and later was named Alice Guy Blachet, which creepily is the same exact woman from the postcards. The 1896 film La Fée aux Choux, The Fairy of the Cabbages, is a lost film directed by Alice Guy, and so supposedly they recreated this film multiple times. You will see this happen with many lost films, and that's its own subject that there may be something else going on with all these early films and we're not really told about it. Quote, Many films of the silent era have been lost. The Library of Congress estimates 75% of all silent films are lost forever. About 10,000 American silent films were produced, but only 2,700 of them still exist in some complete form. Have you ever heard of Alice Guy Blachet? I'm a filmmaker. I've never even heard of that. I've never heard of Alice. I've heard of her as it, with the one for, uh, no, I've never heard of her. I think people will think you're making it up. Eighteen ninety-five, the Lumières present the first public demonstration of their new invention, the cinematograph, the first reliable method to project motion pictures. Among those invited, a young secretary, she thought, why not use film to tell stories? Yes, what does it say about our past when just a hundred years ago, people were essentially shopping for infants? And why isn't this widely known? Could it be that this piece of history was deliberately buried or omitted due to its unsettling implications? I mean, did people actually need to mass purchase babies? Was this part of some grand repopulation scheme? Or a migration wave where orphans and young kids were sold and moved westward? We've touched on this topic before. About a year ago, we released a video called Repopulation Postcards and the Cabbage Patch Kids. Our understanding has since evolved and we got our hands on a brand new collection of absolutely draw-dropping postcards that we can't wait to share with you. If you missed that earlier video, here's a quick rundown. While researching for our old world photoshop episode, we stumbled upon a peculiar trend in postcards from the early 1900s. These postcards, dated from 1890 to 1920, are a genre unto themselves and were circulated throughout Europe and the United States. But here's where it gets wild. Not only do these cards feature babies sprouting from cabbages, there are other categories that make it abundantly clear what's going on. It would seem that babies were being sold in baby farms or even baby shops. We're about to unravel a historical enigma that will leave you questioning everything you thought you knew about the past. What does it say? I'll tell you what you're seeing here. This is a stage. These people were brought here to play a part. A part in our his story. To think these people here 
built this massive and very old looking city when they seem to struggle to just figure out how to walk across the street. They're all organized, they're all in the same clothes, but they're all walking around like they don't have a single clue. And they don't. They are the inheritors. Those fresh faces who not only have no clue how to cross the street, but also seem to be bothered by the sun. As again, with their uniformed appearance, you see them all wearing hats and coverings. These were the freshly grown up foundlings from the orphan asylums and orphan trains that swept this country. Incubator cabbage patch babies. Just look at my past videos on those. Question everything, friends. Until next time. I tried to tell you that after the last reset, they was repopulating these cities with these artificial babies and you didn't believe me. But when I say I got your ass, Oh, I've got your ass. This is a postcard from 1910, and the message can't be any more clearer. It literally shows a machine with the words repopulation, and the man has a lock, and the woman has the key. And if you think that's weird, then listen to this. There was a time when people used the postal service to mail their children. In the early days of the US parcel service, there weren't clear guidelines at what you could and couldn't mail. In January 1913, one Ohio couple took advantage of the US postal services, new parcel service, to make a very special delivery. Their infant son, I mean, come on. What kind of unhumane thing is this? So once upon a time, it was legal to mail a baby in the United States. It happened more than once and by all accounts. These people are not human. They have to tell you what they're doing. It's a part of their code. And this postal card is showing those artificial babies on those so-called orphan trains being shipped all over the country. I try to tell you that I this Lord don't let me die tonight. But this Lord shall be more I wake when I'll accept my fate when I commit it to my heart was in the right place. I did what I did to put food on my plate. So when they come for me, keep me safe. I see dead people coming out of their grave. Life and dirt off their shirt. See you walking around the earth, watching me death with your girl, climbing out of their grave, wiping dirt off their shirt. See you walking around the earth. I see dead people coming out of their grave, wiping dirt off their shirt. See you walking around the earth, watching me death with your girl, climbing out of their grave, wiping dirt off their shirt. See you walking around the earth. I see dead people. It does seem like they were playing with this technology at the time, as if it was some joke. Is this really the true origin of movies? Now, there are more details on this original film. First off, there's even more confusion because in 1935, Leon Gaumont, the guy who literally created the studio that was hiring Alice and the other director, Ferdinand, who made the baby cowhead film, well, he corrected the matter in 1935 that he himself directed the first film that was trying to tell a story to the audience in front of a painted canvas that naively represented the Rue de Belleville. His feminine star was Alice Guy, and two mechanics from the studio were the first screen actors. He also claimed that this first film was called Le Méfait Donté de Vous. So there you have it. The creator of the French studio, which was started in 1895, stated that he was the original director of the first movie ever made, and that the feminine actress was actually Alice Guy, and that this first film was not the Cabbage Patch Fairy, but the misadventures of the calf head. This is the real controversy.
They don't want it to be known that the earliest movie was some weird dark film involving a butcher cutting off a baby calf's head and serving it as a dish? I've looked everywhere for the film and it doesn't seem to exist online. Strangely as we searched, we found that there's an actual kids book called The Misadventures of Cowhead. Maybe it's nothing, but still strange that this came up when searching for the translated film. So it seems, for some reason, this cowhead movie was removed from the spotlight so that the first film became the Cabbage Patch Fairy, and that throughout the century, there is enough evidence to confirm there were indeed three versions of the film. However, a lot of this new information comes from a book in 1976, translated Autobiography of a Film Pioneer. The multiple authors discuss all this information on how a report was started by Leon Gaumont in 1907, then later corrected in 1945, but it seems that this is just some information coming out in 1976 used to change the history of the subject. As we mentioned, Gaumont made it clear a decade earlier in 1935 what the earliest film was, and that Alice Guy was the actress in it. So there's a lot of back and forth when it comes to the history of a lot of these lost films. Lots of different opinions, but after 80 years go by, and we just forget all about it and just go with the new mainstream explanation. Well, what if Alice Guy, who in the 1902 version specifically has a midwife, not a fairy, used to assist the honeymoon couple. It All of this was to promote the incubators that were happening at the world fairs, which were, quote, a boutique of fully operational baby incubators filled with live premature infants. Why premature? And why are they creating Art Nouveau posters? One done by Adolfo Hohenstein, which is not a postcard, but this is a poster from 1896, and you can see that there's a snake going around the stem, but also that there are babies being grown from the flower buds. There is no denying it. These Cabbage Patch references, these growing babies depictions found on these old postcards, real postcards, posters, and now the first film are all depicting babies being sold at incubators at the World's Fair. And we're not going to ask any questions? Is it not interesting that the first film, the first real movie that was not a short, was right out of this period of 1896? Are we possibly dealing with some strange remnants of this art and film that were a part of a transitional phase after the reset? Think about it. What if this footage of the Cabbage Patch Fairy is what was given to the orphans? We only know what was given to us about the original film. And what's with all this remaking film stuff? Seems like there might be something else going on. Could there have been footage in the first film that someone didn't want us to see? Or did they make some mistake and decide that they were being too blatant in their symbolism? We also must consider that during this repopulation process, there would be people in charge or overseeing this process. And what if that's what these first film studios were doing? Getting ready to repopulate the world with entertainment and distraction. Which would explain why many of these old films are so weird and scary. What if these films are some kind of trolling from elite groups that had not only taken over newly renovated cities, but were also re-engineering found technologies such as the camera? Just like dating on historical events and photographs can be incorrect, the same goes for these early films. Not only do many disagreements and controversies exist on the origin and creators of these lost films, but many aren't even certain of who directed which and what date it was created on. So is it impossible to consider that some of these films may not be from an older civilization? but from some type of transitional phase in which these secret societies moved into taken over cities and were going through this repopulation program when they decided to make these films to leave the new inhabitants that were freshly plucked from the fields. Okay, let's see what's inside here. Oh, here, it oh, here he comes. It's a little boy. Give him a smack on the bottom. Get him to cry. Oh, no. 
Kitty Snappy on. Bit of powder, make him smell beautiful. There we go. This on your baby. His name's Jack. There you are. Give him a big cuddle and a big kiss. Isn't he beautiful? And there his papers. Look here. Look, Louise. Look, there's his papers. It's his name. Jack Buck. They're like little people. It's not as if you're just going into a shop and buying a doll and walking out. It's nice to go through the whole thing of seeing them born. Um, you can watch, see how they're being changed and they get fed and they get loved. You sign adoption papers, you say an oath. Um, and it's just a nice sense of belonging for the owners of these, the new owners of their babies. Try to tell you that after the last reason... Were some of the infants on the orphan trains from Great Tartaria? These infants had seemingly been accompanied to North America with their parents and were from the cultures of the Vetus Mundus, the old world of mainland Europe. Once they arrived in the eastern United States, the infants and parents were sometimes separated and the infants were placed in the Novus Mundus, the new world of the elites and the secret societies. Was this done so they could be reprogrammed by them? After the destruction of Great Tartaria, did some kind of cognitive dissonance occur and cause significant psychiatric issues for millions of adult Tartarian Aryans? We have to remember that even when the orphan train movement began, the third mud flood had not yet happened and would not occur until the 7th of June 1892, which means there would have been a successive levels of the migration into North America from the urban settlements of mainland Europe, which had been extensively damaged after the destruction of Great Tartaria had arisen once the first mud flood and the second mud flood had ended. What it is and what it do, my people out there in the TikTok world. You know who this is. This is your boy Scar Sees the Moment, and I'm always reporting on the BS. You know, I've always wondered that about this like why is it that you continue to look through these old postcards you ever heard of the orphan trains it's some wild stuff where'd all these kids come from and none of their parents were looking okay so in my research this is a jumping cactus in my arm i'm going to show you how when i pull this out this really this what's really going on repopulation of the made-up white race we clearly see there are no so-called blonde babies <laughs> We found one reference to what these cards were in a book on Amazon named Babylon, Surreal Babies, in which the author describes these same peculiar 1900s postcards and how they were deeply influential to many famous artists, including Salvador Dali. Yet, the author even admits that little is known of their history. In order to understand why we've labeled them repopulation postcards, a thorough understanding of resets, criteria, orphan trains, incubators, asylums, and odd fellows will be necessary. These cards depict babies being grown. There are many different styles within this category. One of the most interesting is the Cabbage Patch Baby. There's something eerie about these photos, as if someone's trying to tell us something. Martin Cooney wasn't displaying incubators at the Berlin Expo. Cooney didn't invent the incubator either. 
It was invented over 30 years before he was born in Russia. And Cooney wasn't even a doctor. It was all part of an ever-changing origin story that Cooney would write and revise over the years to help sell the drama behind his boardwalk incubators. But for an origin tale that was laced and borrowed with anecdotes and fabricated details, there was one truth to it all. Martin Cooney would help change the world. Repopulation Agenda According to Ben Franklin Concerns What's re Did you know that in our not-so-distant past, babies were created and incubated en masse? This happened and was showcased as attractions at the World Fairs and even in New York's Coney Island. Can you even imagine carnival attractions where people paid to watch babies growing in incubators? Where were the parents? What happened to all of the babies? Well, have you heard of the orphan trains? They were packed off and shipped out west to help repopulate the great Tartarian cities found abandoned across the land. They were sent to humongous orphanages and the people were able to get orphans to work their farms and factories. Free labor was abundant and it was needed to rebuild after the last reset. There is loads of evidence showing that the original Cabbage Patch Kids were these orphans which people just simply picked up and took home like fresh produce. Many children were basically indentured servants and were subjected to lifelong slave labor and sexual abuse. Everything they taught you is a lie. America was covered with empty Tartarian cities left to rot after the Great Reset and those that followed grew a few millions babies to repopulate and rebuild. They dug out those cities and started over. Research Tartaria and ask questions. Suspend your disbelief. Like, follow, and share. I'll tell you what. I really, really, really got something to say. Grand Awakening. Shame. Twisted history. By a goddamn cabbage patch. This will be some of the most important information you have ever came across in your life. I want to start by asking you a question. When you were younger, did you ever hear that storks delivered babies? And did you ever wonder why people would even be questioning? where babies came from. I had a discussion with my dad last night about this topic. I want to play a short clip of what he said about storks delivering babies. Even as a child, I remember coming up hearing about storks delivering babies through movies or through, uh, I don't know if it's through books, but it was never taken as serious. I thought it was just a way for parents to say that's where babies come from instead of the parents. Most of us probably thought something like what he just said. The truth is revealed in movies and TV shows. I want to show you a clip from a movie made by Warner Bros. Studios released in 2016. Pay attention to what the stork says and what's going on in the background behind him. It's an image as old as time. A baby swaddled in white. Delivered by the stork. But you'll find here on Stork Mountain, we take baby delivery seriously. I'm here to finally unveil our new and improved human infant production facility. We have perfected and streamlined the process, devising a zero mistake workflow. Trademark. It may seem like it's just a made up innocent children's movie, but it's about to get deeper. In order for you to really see the big picture, you have to understand that orphans and orphanages were a huge thing in the late 1800s and early 1900s. This is why there were so many orphan themed movies that came out. What I'm about to show you next is the mind-blowing part that I was talking about. 
But before I show you, shameless plug, bookofhiddentruths.com if you guys want to learn how to see with your third eye for the first time in your life. Or you can click the orange series button that you see that red arrow pointing to below. It's a simple four minute meditation. Less than 20 seconds after you complete the meditation, a colorful 3D floating orb that's only visible to your third eye will appear in front of you and float around your room. It'll be one of the most life changing experiences because you instantly realize that there's a whole nother world of things going on 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 earth that our regular eyes can't see it's only visible to our third eye but let's get back to the video look i want to show you some clips from a video on the mind unveil youtube channel if this video was just talking about the topic it wouldn't be that mind-blowing what makes this video so mind-blowing is the fact that he's showing real postcards from the late 1800s and early 1900s that he's collected all of the postcards have babies on them now there's nothing wrong with that right what's shocking is the words that the creators of the postcards have put on them and what some people that lived in those times were writing onto the postcards this is the thumbnail to the video on the left side of the thumbnail is one of the postcards with babies on them it's in French. I translated what it says on that postcard in English. And this is what it said. Babies for sale. With them you will have the best joys. This is an advertisement. They're advertising their product. He has a pile of postcards with babies on them and the babies are all riding the train. One of the things that I thought of if they were being sold, how are they being delivered? How did they get to people? This right here answers that question. So this is the babies and trains category. That's not just cabbages. That's what's so fascinating, 1909. They also have these babies being shipped or transferred on trains. This is the next clip that I wanted to show you. I translated what that banner says, and that banner says, the baby farm. Super cool. Yep, this is um, a baby farm. The farm of babies. Let's see. 1921 is the postmark. Now I thought this one right here was interesting because it showed babies coming out of eggs as if they want to convince people that babies may come from eggs. Keep in mind that they also showed babies growing from cabbage. This is where the whole idea of Cabbage Patch Kids came from. So there's actually a lot more of these but this is the only one that we have in our collection. Like a lot of them on a farm being incubated. Here's a stack of postcards with babies and storks on them. So yeah, this is the stork water baby category. Let's look at this one a little, a little bit longer, go back to the front. Yeah, they're kind of all grouped up here. Very strange. Of course, this video is just for entertainment purposes only, but out of all the cards that I saw, this card right here let me know, okay, it's real. It's not just a conspiracy theory. Look what this lady wrote on the back of this postcard. This one is a crazy one probably already brought it up but this is the one where on the back it's basically saying to hurry up and make an order let me see if I can show you dear L don't you think they are very pretty on the other side if so hurry up and order one before they all get sold she said hurry up and buy one before they all get sold this would mean that some people are the descendants of manufactured babies Another thing that I thought was interesting, and I want to get your guys' opinion on this. So in the Storks movie, there were all types of different races of babies that were being manufactured. But I went through the entire video, I saw all the postcards that he showed in this video, and I noticed there wasn't not one black baby on any of the postcards. My name is Moses. I create content that changes people's perspective on life and the world. You can go through my videos if you want to learn more.